I'm Connor Walls and I'm here once again to talk about embedded software. Today I want to revisit a topic that I've talked about before which is of increasing importance in embedded systems, embedded software in particular, and that is power management. Now in the past power management was very much considered to be a hardware issue, you know, something software guys didn't have to think about. But it transpires that there's a lot of software can do to influence power. And this is something we need to understand and know how to apply in our embedded software development. What I want to look at today is a useful concept which shows the relative importance of different parts of a, an embedded system and how they apply to power management. This is what we call the power pyramid. And it shows the hierarchy of different things that affect power management. So if we start at the bottom, the most important thing is the hardware. <laughs> Ultimately, the hardware sets the best possible conditions. Um, if the hardware consumes too much power and you can't do anything about it, well, it's set that situation. Now, that's the base of everything. As a software engineer, we're interested in everything that sits on top of the hardware. The next most important thing is a concept rather than a piece of software, and that is use cases. Use cases are basically modes of operation of a device. So when you design a device, you'll be thinking about how the user will apply it. They may put it into one mode to do something. They may switch it off into some standby mode. Well, there's two use cases to start with. And there may be a handful, there may be dozens of use cases. Each one is likely to have its own set of uh, parameters that affect power management. Which peripherals does it need? How much CPU performance does it need? to do its job, those kinds of things. So defining the use cases and using them to drive power management is a really powerful part of the strategy. The next layer up in the power pyramid is the operating system. Now, the operating system is important because it needs to firstly be pretty efficient in order to not consume too much power by executing too much code, but it also needs to provide you with some kind of means of controlling power. And that's probably best done by means of getting an operating system that has a power management framework incorporated within itself. So that's the interface between your application code and the, uh, uh, and the hardware, effectively. But there is another layer above the operating system which uh, is, is important in this respect, above in terms of lower in importance for power management, and that is uh, BSPs and drivers. Now drivers um, talk to the hardware directly of course and they need to have the right facilities in them to let the code be controlled. But unless they're used in the context of an operating system with, with a power management framework that isn't terribly useful. The very top of the power pyramid is the least important thing is the application code. Um, application code typically cannot be tuned to make power management better in general. You need to look at the configuration and go down the pyramid at the more important layers. Um, application code that misbehaves can probably make power management worse, or power consumption worse, um, but it's unlikely to make it better. Hence, it's placed at the top of the pyramid. This all gives us a clue as to our priorities when we're designing a system. We need to start from day one thinking about power, and we need to work our way up the power pyramid. So very early on, think about the use cases. Early on, look at the operating system capabilities, and finally, we actually get to the application code. So I hope that's a useful concept for you in thinking about power management. It's a subject I'm bound to refer to again in the future, and there have been previous videos looking at this topic. So that's it for today. Till next time, bye for now.